What's up guys, it's Sebastian here from Noble Frugal Studio. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a walk cycle just like this in Tahoma 2D. The walk cycle is an age old animation exercise, but it's a very necessary one. In fact, in Castle Dark, I've made, let's see, upwards five walk cycles in just a three minute film. It does get repetitive, but you do have to know how to make a walk cycle. I promise you that this exercise will help you because you'll be using it a lot. I'm gonna go over the four main poses that every good walk cycle should have as I demonstrate animating one. So let's get started. Oh, but what's that, Sebastian? Your brush looks super duper cool. Where'd you get this awesome pencil brush that's not in OpenTunes natively? If you wanna see where I got this brush, guys, click the card to be taken to my custom brushes video. That'll show you how to download custom My Paint brushes into OpenTunes or Tahoma. So check that out and come right back, all right, cool. So for this walk cycle, I'm gonna be drawing my character, Kimi. Now I'm just gonna make a basic sketch of the area that she's going to take up so I can configure Tahoma accordingly. I haven't used Tahoma in a while, and the reason is because um, I get this issue with my brush, or if I hit Control Z right after I try to make a brush stroke, it'll start thinking that I'm trying to use the assistance. It seems like a small issue, but when you're drawing and it happens so often, just like there, it can be pretty frustrating to deal with. But today, we're just gonna use it because Tahoma has so many good tools I think it's kind of worth it. So notice in the sketch, I'm kind of outlining the rib cage, the direction that um, the curve of Kimi's pose and also the pelvis. I'm indicating that, but with these two circles, you just have the legs sort of going like this. For this, I also want to keep in mind Kimi's individual personality, her, what is Kimi's walk? You know, cause whenever you're animating a walk, you're not just animating a basic walk cycle. There really is no basic walk cycle. Every character is going to walk slightly differently. So Kimi's walk cycle is gonna be kind of an elegant, floaty kind of walk cycle. As if she's gonna walk as if she's sort of floating off the ground. Sort of this dainty little walk. After brainstorming what her walk should look like, that's what I came up with and that would fit, that would fit her character the best. This is kind of what I want the walk to look like. Um, and now I'm gonna configure my Tahoma to help us with perspective and stuff like that, just so we can keep track. So let's go to the grids section. Let's put a horizon, why not? Just like that. This by far has to be my favorite feature about Tahoma is just the, the grids are just amazing. Let me take off the rule of thirds for just one second. Okay, so that lower line is, uh, let's kind of make them match. There we go. Made the top of this perspective grid match our rule of thirds grid. I'm gonna hit Control Alt with the brush tool selected and then click to add a vanishing point. Add it over here. Now we're gonna open up the grids menu to configure it and see what we want. So we don't want it to be too transparent. This isn't really necessary for all animations, but it just helps to remember that you're always animating in a 3D space. That is unless your animation is meant to look like it's in a 2D space, of course. Make this show very, very small like that. Very transparent. So the brush that I'm using is this pencil brush right here in the brush pack. And I just think it looks phenomenal. Really, really looks good. Just gonna edit my pressure settings and then we'll get started. So there's four main poses to every walk cycle. And the first is the contact pose. This is where the heel hits the ground and the shift of weight is about to go from one leg to the other. Let's start by drawing our first contact pose. The reason I say first is because since this is a walk cycle, every pose that we draw is gonna be repeated. Draw a circle to just outline our head. Kind of a, how to draw Kimi. You just draw this sort of top shape. Well, let's get that vanishing point back. In fact, I'm gonna add it back and then we're gonna put the floor line just right there. Just kind of put where we want things. Maybe her torso ends somewhat like right there. This is where her body starts. These open tunes guides are really, really useful. Or open tunes, I keep calling it open tunes. These Tahoma guides. Really actually her head should be tilted slightly up. So let me add some definition to this because she's having this very, elegant, very feminine walk. We're gonna have her head tilted just slightly up. You're gonna wanna pay attention to hip swivel when you're doing a walk. So it's kind of hard to explain, kind of complicated, but basically during a walk, when this leg is forward and this leg is back, the hips are gonna swivel. So this will be slightly higher than this one. And then it'll switch when we switch to the next leg. So this will be like here. And then, so there's just a slight swivel. And we're not gonna exaggerate it a little too much, but just keep that in mind as well. 
Also keep in mind that when the legs are doing something, like say the legs are like this, the arms are doing the opposite. So if this leg is back, this arm is forward. And if this leg is forward, this arm is sort of tilted back. So keep in mind the hips and the shoulder motion when you're animating a walk, that they alternate. So this is if the hips are like this, the shoulders are like that. They're always going to be alternating. When you're animating characters, always want to keep in mind silhouettes. We just want to make sure that even if the person can't see all the colors or the different lines and tangents of our artwork, that they sort of know what our pose is doing. So um, when I'm kind of done sketching this out, I'm going to look at the overall pose and see if it's sort of readable from a silhouette standpoint. This is where the 3D really comes in in the placement of the legs. Like before I would have done like something like this and um, not that that's incorrect, but we want to keep in mind 3D space of where their leg actually be if they're really someone walking trying to maintain their balance. The three quarter view is a difficult view to do a walk cycle in. I chose this because it sort of suits the walk that Kimi is doing. She's doing this very floaty sort of smug walk. <laughs> And so I just thought that this would fit her character if I if you get to see the her arms swing back and forth. And so we're just coming up on the end of this initial contact pose. Yeah, I just think this view would capture the essence of the shot best. I do want to get this initial drawing very correct though. I want to make it accurate to her updated model sheet as, as accurate as possible because this is sort of going to be our reference drawing for the rest of the animation. Also, I thought the sketch one brush was awesome. This brush is really, really nice. Really, really nice. Just look at that sketch. I really like the way that looks. Hit Control S. What does Control S do? Control S saves your work. Have that shortcut memorized. I might omit drawing her mouth for this frame. But so far, this is a really good start. So this is our first contact pose. Now our next task is to make the mirrored pose, the opposite contact pose, where instead of her left leg being forward, her right leg is forward. So let's do that. Gonna activate the onion skin so we can just get the general guidelines down. So the torso was tilted up this way. We're gonna tilt it that way for now. The hips were like this way, so we're gonna do it this way for now. Okay, that looks good. Now, since this leg is back, this arm is going to be forward, just like the other one was. And I just a slight tilt to it. I'm gonna go that way. Make sure we have the mass of the arm correct. I think this is part of what makes this um, view so difficult is that you can't mirror this view. The three quarter is the three quarter view of a walk cycle isn't symmetrical, which is why it can be so difficult. But um, I think it was a good choice anyway because I'm starting to see what I wanted out of this animation. You guys will see me erasing a lot here. I hope that helps you to know that if you erase a lot in your animation, you do things over, it's all right. You're not doing anything wrong. That's just kind of how the process goes while you're learning. I think because a lot of times you guys will see animators do this stuff and it's like they can just do something really, really quickly. Just so you know, it takes a lot of practice to do that. So. All right, moving on. The next pose that we have to implement is the passing pose. Now this is the pose where the leg that's in the back, so for our example, since we're starting here, this leg right here will kind of shade it a little bit. Some people shade their, their other leg. I'm not gonna do that here because it's easy to tell which leg it is since it's a three quarter view. This leg is going to be passing this leg. So the pose is going to be in between the two contact poses. What you'll notice happens during a contact pose, if you look at reference and you look at people walking, is that the character will go up very slightly. Now, spoiler alert, there is an up pose where they're go, they'll go even higher. So make sure to make this just very slight so you can exaggerate that up pose. I'm probably gonna make it somewhere like just slightly, slightly. I'm just gonna draw all the lines of the guideline of her head slightly higher in the passing pose. Oh, hit Control S. What does Control S do? It saves. Why am I repeating myself? Because you ha you have to save. You have to you have to know it. I'm gonna repeat myself a few more times during this tutorial so I can drill it in your head to save because these programs can crash a lot. All 
All right, so that's one passing pose. She only goes slightly higher. That was on the bill. I'm gonna erase this throughout. All right, so now we need passing pose number two. And that's where this leg right here is gonna be passing this leg right here. All right, let's do it. All right, hit control S to save. We sort of have that dance going that I wanted. The sort of um, elegant stroll that I'm looking for. All right, so now if we space these frames out, and of course we save, we basically have a functioning walk. That's pretty fast right now, but that's basically the basis of our walk, the two contacts and the two pos passing poses. Now, it doesn't look perfect, and I already see things I need to fix, like I need to draw Kimi a neck <laughs> for this frame, but it's, it's really, really good so far. Yeah, so basically this is what we have. You have the basic outline for our entire walk, which is the two contacts and the two passing poses. So next we're gonna get into the down and up poses. And after that, we'll have basically everything we need to have finished our walk. And now it actually looks like she's tap dancing or something because of how fast this is playing. Uh, it's funny. Okay, so we're gonna keep this on four since we're gonna be adding some, some more poses. And so next we have our down pose and our first down pose. So the down pose comes right after the contact and it's in between the contact and the passing pose. And it's called the down pose because the whole body will go down. It'll take the actual step. So this, this thing's gonna reach right here. It's gonna take the actual step and then it's gonna go into the passing pose. So this is one of the most important things to implement into an animation because, and personally, I think it's more important than the up pose because it really gives that feeling of the step was taken. So it kind of confirms the walk cycle in the head of the viewer. Like this just kind of looks like some sort of tap dance, but once we add that down pose, it's gonna start looking like a walk. Okay, so we can get the onion skin in here. I'm actually gonna turn the opacity of the onion skin down. Let's turn it, the thickness of the paper up to 90 and see what happens. Yeah, that, that'll help. What's gonna happen is that since this hip is pointing up this way, when you go down, it's gonna point up even further that way. So the hip's gonna be somewhat like this. And then this leg coming up forward is gonna come even more forward. So it's gonna be like this. But in fact, it's actually gonna be bent because we're taking a step. This is gonna come forward. This is gonna bend. And this is going to take a step. The, this leg will go further back because sort of the, it's an exaggerated version of this contact pose. So the leg goes down and everything goes further back because we're sort of revving up to, to pass. So we wanna make sure that this arm comes forward just a little bit more twist that torso just a tad bit more so it's going like that accentuate that um that twist just a tad more really this is facing us and then it's sort of twist but we want to accentuate that twist twist a little more in this down position and of course we'll tone it back if it takes away from the floatiness of our walk cycle which is what we're kind of going for we're not looking for floatiness in an animation sense we're looking for floatiness in a uh, character sense so along with the down pose since the character is actually going down um, we can shorten these legs a little bit so they're a bit too long right now um i did sort of forget that the character's going down meeting that point so they're going they're actually going to have a shift down and depending how dramatic your pose is depends on how dramatic the down pose is And so that adds a lot of bounce to the walk cycle. It's um, looking a lot more dynamic now. And now the final pose that we have to add is the up pose. Now in the up pose, this leg going backwards, the leg going this way is going to be sort of on its toe. And then this foot is gonna be almost to the contact pose. So it's gonna be sort of like that. And we need two up poses just like every pose in this walk cycle. It's like the passing pose, but like I mentioned earlier, the passing pose isn't gonna go as high as the up pose. The passing pose goes up, up pose is gonna be somewhere like here. Up pose is like really where you switch between the hips going from here to going from here. So we can make this up pose actually pretty neutral. The up pose is always gonna go between the passing pose and the, con the second contact pose, just so you know. 
It's okay if things seem a little bit short right now because they're going to end up being taller. So don't forget that you're going to be pushing your um, animated subject just a little higher than they usually go down. We can put the leg down more and just make sure we're getting like sort of a straight, sort of a straight result. Just know that your up pose gonna, is going to be different depending on your subject. Like I always say, the up pose in this diagram that I have here, that I the diagram that I follow to make walk cycles is pretty exaggerated. And if you don't want that effect, then you don't have to push the poses to be that exaggerated. Then I kind of notices that with Kimi's sort of feminine walk, her, her legs are actually going towards the center and then they kind of curve around to the back and follow their own arc, which is kind of cool. Um, so I don't know if that's something we're going to have to correct or whether that's just sort of the nature of her walk. So this looks like the leg sort of floating into this position. We don't want that. We want the leg to be more straight here. So it can contrast that position and you can see that the leg is actually bent, especially with this shin right here. Shin sort of bent here. I want to negate that angle with this pose. Make it so it's not bent. All right, so it's playing a bit fast. Um, all we have to do is make the last up pose and then we can slow it down and get to timing it as well. So this pose is the last up pose and it's going, it's going to go back into our first frame. So we have the first frame reference and we have the frame right before this referenced as well. So we're all set. So let me get the legs first. Let's see where we're going. This leg is going to be, let's see, where are we? Where is it at in the first pose? So it's all the way out of sight in the first pose. So we're gonna push it all the way back like that. Make sure it's like that. And then this other leg is gonna come forward like this. And I want to make sure that everything is higher than the next frame so we can have that sort of we can have you can see the shift downwards when we go to the contact pose. All right, now that we're done with all those poses, we've got the two contact poses, the two passing poses, the two down poses and the two up poses. We are all done with all the poses we have to do for this walk cycle. And so far that looks so much better than I thought it would. Wow, look at that. So much personality. This is a this is a runway walk. Very, very, that turned out way better than I thought it was. So I already see some things I have to fix there. Um, only minor things, but basically that's it, guys. That's how you get your basic walk down. Gotta get the contacts down, then the passing poses, and then the up and down poses. No walk is ever a basic walk. Rarely will you ever animate a very basic walk. But um, it's good to get a basic walk down, but I'm just very proud of having a lot of personality in this walk. And I encourage you guys to add some personality to your walk as well. Try to think about what the character is doing, who the character is, what their personality is, and kind of why they're walking. So of course, next we're going to be adding the second pass, which is the clothes on our character, because we got to get the anatomy figured out first before you start adding things on top. We're going to add a layer on top, get the appropriate clothes for this animation occasion. <laughs> then we're going to move on to line art, coloring, and shading. Before I go, I want to announce the winners of the Walk Cycle Animation Contest hosted on my Discord server. We host animation contests monthly, so if you want to join, earn some points, and develop your animation skills, follow the link in the description to join my Discord server. I have two winners for this month, I just couldn't decide between these two, and there are actually two previous winners. So congratulations to just an ordinary fish gal for making this really, really awesome, sketchy, textured walk cycle. I believe this is an original character, which is really, really awesome. You definitely communicated the jovial, energetic walk that this character has, along with some nice secondary animation with the leaf they're holding. This animation looks awesome. The second winner is Nexi Laza. Once again, this animation just has so much effort put into it. As you can see you made the background loop, character design is nice, and it's all colored and completely finished. Great work on this one. I can already see some improvement on your part. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun making this tutorial. If you want to check out how you can get this custom brush that I use, this, this pencil brush that looks really, really good, check out the tutorial in the card. If you want to support free animation tutorials, be sure to check out my Patreon page with the link in the description below. With all that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.